Welcome to the Circulatory System Lab. In this lab, we will cover the basics of the human heart and our double circulatory route, which includes the systemic route and the pulmonary. First, let's take a look at the human heart. Structurally, it is a muscular hollow organ made up of the two receiving chambers, the right atrium and the left atrium, and two pumping chambers, the right and left ventricles. Two major arteries through which blood passes through exiting the heart are the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. You notice that the aorta is red in color and the pulmonary trunk is blue in color. This denotes that the aorta transports oxygenated blood and the pulmonary trunk transports deoxygenated blood. The other blood vessel identified on this model is the superior vena cava. You may also see it identified as the anterior vena cava in some diagrams. This blood vessel is a vein through which blood returns back to the heart from above, such as from the arms, and the neck, and the head. Now let's take a posterior view or backside view of the heart. Here is the aorta. It is identified as well as the superior vena cava. The left and right pulmonary arteries are branches off of the pulmonary trunk and will transport deoxygenated blood to the lungs. The left and right pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood back to the heart. The left atrium receives this blood. Also identified is the opening to the inferior vena cava. You may also see it identified as the posterior vena cava in some diagrams. This blood vessel is a vein through which blood returns back to the heart from below, such as in areas of the trunk and legs. Blood returning in the superior and inferior vena cava is received by the right atrium. It is very important that blood always travels in one direction and does not backflow. Valves in the heart prevent backflow from taking place. The atrioventricular valves, or the AV valves for short, prevent backflow from the ventricles back up into the atria. The right atrioventricular valve, or the right AV valve, is shown here. It is nicknamed the tricuspid due to structurally being made up of three flaps or cusps. You also see the left atrioventricular valve or the left AV valve. It also has a nickname, the bicuspid, due to structure, structurally being made up of two flaps or cusps. It can also be referred to by a third name, the mitral valve. The semilunar valves prevent the backflow of blood in the great arteries, the pulmonary trunk, and the aorta back down into the ventricles. The pulmonary semilunar valve, or it can also be referred to as just the pulmonary valve, blocks the backflow into the right ventricle. The aortic valve blocks the backflow into the left ventricle. The ventricles are separated by a wall called the interventricular septum. It prevents the deoxygenated blood in the right ventricle from mixing with the oxygenated blood in the left ventricle. The atria are also separated by a wall called the interatrial septum, though it is not identified here. The heart is a very muscular organ. A thick layer of cardiac muscle makes up the heart wall. It is referred to as the myocardium, myo meaning muscle and cardium referring to the heart. Let's take a look at the double circulatory system in a human. It is made up of both the systemic pathway that transports blood from the heart to all body areas and then back to the heart. The pulmonary pathway transports blood to the lungs, then back to the heart. We will begin with a systemic circulation route. The route begins at the left ventricle where oxygenated blood is pumped into the aorta. The aorta branches into smaller arteries through which some oxygenated blood is transported to areas above the heart into the arms and the head, while other branches transport blood to areas below the heart, such as into the trunk and the legs. 
blood will make its way into small arterioles and through a capillary bed, which is the site of exchange. Oxygen will diffuse out of the blood into the cells and carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the cells into the capillary. The flow of the now deoxygenated blood continues into venules which merge into larger veins. These veins merge into the superior vena cava from above and into the inferior vena cava from below. The vena cava drain into the right atrium concluding the systemic circulatory route. Now let's take a look at the pulmonary circulation route. The route begins at the right ventricle that has been filled with deoxygenated blood from the right atrium. The right ventricle pumps this deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk which branches into the right and left pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries branch into smaller arteries and then into arterioles which lead into the capillary beds within the lungs. Oxygen will diffuse out of the lungs alveoli into the capillary and the carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the capillary into the alveoli. The flow of the now oxygenated blood continues into venules which merge into larger veins. The right and left pulmonary veins make the return carrying oxygenated blood and this empties into the left atrium. It will help by remembering our saying about the color of blood vessels. Arteries are red, veins are blue, except with the lungs where the opposite is true. Pulmonary arteries transport deoxygenated blood away from the heart and the pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood back to the heart. Something else to help you remember about the pathway of blood flow through the heart. The right side of the heart always deals with, with the deoxygenated blood, so it is depicted blue, and the left side, depicted red, deals with oxygenated blood. The atria always receive blood, and the ventricles always pump blood. Let's answer these questions. Which chamber pumps oxygenated blood? Thinking? It is the left ventricle. You said pump. Ventricles always pump, so that's the ventricle. And we said oxygenated. The left side of the heart always deals with oxygenated blood. Let's look at a second question. Which chamber receives deoxygenated blood? Let's take a minute and think. Receives deoxygenated blood. Right atrium. Which chambers receive? It would be an atrium. Which side of the heart deals with deoxygenated blood? Right. So which chamber receives deoxygenated blood? That is the right atrium. Now that we've got the pathways down, we need to take a look at preventing backflow of blood during the cardiac cycle. During ventricular diastole, which is the part of the cycle when the ventricles are relaxing, they are filling with blood from the atria. The AV valves, the tricuspid and the bicuspid, are open to allow for the flow of blood from the atria into the ventricles. To prevent a backflow of blood from the pulmonary trunk and the aorta into the ventricles, the semilunar valves need to be closed, those being the pulmonary and the aortic valves. During ventricular systole, as seen here on the right, this is the part of the cardiac cycle when the ventricles are contracting. They are pumping blood into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. The pulmonary and the aortic valves, the semilunars, need to be open. Now because the pressure of blood is so great in the ventricles, Backflow into the atria 
needs to be blocked. So therefore, the AVs, the tricuspid and the bicuspid, close, block, blocking the backflow from the ventricles up into the atria.